You're listening to the Author Stories Podcast. Bringing you the story behind the stories and the storytellers. Margaret Wyatt, Terry Brooks, Sheena Kamal, Matthew Quick, JT Ellison, Walt D. Williams, Brad Ford, Corey, Dr. O, Brandon Sanders, Robin Mom, Ernest Klein, Jim Butcher, Sherwin Harris. Visit HankGarner.com for archives of all the shows. Today's guest is Chris Kennedy. Thanks for tuning in to Author Stories today. We've got a fantastic show coming up for you. As always, go to HankGarner.com where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, YouTube, anywhere that you like to get your author interviews, you can find us there. I'd like to thank Aaron St. Pierre and Gwen White today for sponsoring this episode with their book, The Fire Thief. She fights to survive, but only white-hot rage will reveal her true power. Remembering the hope of the past helps Stasha endure her bleak present. Blaming herself for her best friend's injury, she brawls and steals to provide in a world run by Faye. But with an arranged marriage approaching, Stasha swipes two silvers in hope of their escape and erupts into a fiery burst of magic. Surprised and confused by power she can't possibly control, Stasha barely has time to register that her friend has been sent off to die. With time running out and no options left, she must put her faith in powerful strangers as they dive into a phase skirmish for supremacy. Surrounded by dubious allies, her only hope to redeem her past is to mount an attack on an inescapable death camp. As Stasha fights to free her friend, the battle she's faced her whole life is about to become a war. The Fire Thief is the first book in an exhilarating high fantasy series. If you like gutsy heroines, elemental magic, and epic sword and sorcery action, then you'll love New York Times bestselling authors Aaron St. Pierre and Gwen White's Roller Coaster Tale. Buy The Fire Thief to unlock an ancient fae destiny today. Also thanks to Patrice Fitzgerald and the Beyond the Stars Space Opera Anthology series. There are five volumes out, and a sixth one comes out this summer at the Beyond the Stars Space Opera Anthology series. Each release includes between 10 and 15 short stories, followed by a Q&A with the author. Some of the writers are New York Times and USA Today bestsellers. Some readers are saying, it's a blisteringly good collection. These stories are full of great complex characters, not all of them human. Twists and turns and fantastic world building. Epic space battles, exotic aliens, far-flung planets. Fifteen fabulous tales that will thrill and surprise you. Some chosen from previous Beyond the Stars volumes and some brand new are in the Best Of collection. Come along as these award-winning authors sweep you along on adventures as broad as the universe and as deep as their imagination. The Beyond the Stars space opera anthology series. Pick it up today. Well, thanks for joining me again for the Author Stories Podcast, where I bring you the story behind the stories and the storytellers. Today, I'm really excited to have Chris Kennedy on the show with me today, one of the most prolific writers and publishers in science fiction today. Uh, He has a brand new book out called Hope is Not a Strategy. It's a story collection uh, that uh, I think you guys are really going to love, and uh, he's got lots of new releases coming out that we're going to talk about. Uh, Welcome to the show, Chris. Hey, thanks a lot for having me, Hank. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you here, Chris. Um, before we get uh, into talking about all the fun stuff we're going to talk about, we begin each show with the same question. And that question is, what is your first memory of wanting to be a writer or storyteller? Well, that's that's easy because it uh, was only about five and a half years ago. Um, they They say that 81% of people have a story they want to tell. Uh, I was always part of the 19%. Um, so, I mean, you know how you, you talk with authors and they grow up, oh, yeah, I always wanted to be an author. Oh, I wanted to tell stories. Oh, I wanted to do this. Yeah, that was never me. Um, we had we had just moved back to Virginia Beach from um, Pennsylvania and uh, had a heck of a time finding a job and finally got one and um, was waiting on my security clearance so I couldn't do a whole lot. Um, and one of the things that I had done was I, you know, looked at CNN and a couple of the stories that I had seen, you know, all kind of gelled as I was driving home from work and uh, said, you know, if if this, then that, then this, then that. Hey, that'd be a pretty cool story. Um, I said, well, you know, what what would I do with it? 
Um, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not an author. I, I don't, I don't know anyone in the publishing industry. Um, and, and I went back and forth, you know, but it's such a cool story. And, um, eventually by the time I, I made it home, I had talked myself out of it. Um, and I walked in and, and my wife said, Hey, uh, dinner's going to be a little late cause life. And I thought, wow, I think I'll sit down and write that story. So I pulled out the laptop, sat at the kitchen table and started banging away. And uh, my wife said, Hey, what are you doing? And, and I said, I'm writing a story. And she said, yeah, right. What are you really doing? <laughs> because it was so far outside anything that I'd ever said I wanted to do or, or, you know, given her any indication that, you know, that might even be a possible thing. So, you know, about, about five and a half years ago, that was uh, the first time I, I ever thought um, of, of being an author. Um, when I did my doctoral dissertation, I, I finished that up and went, hooray, I never have to write anything long again. <laughs> I, I love that story as much or more than the stories I hear of people that, you know, knew at three years old they wanted to be a writer. Uh, there's something fantastic about when that story idea just hits you just right, um, that there's, there's almost nothing that you can do but write the story. That's, that is such a fantastic, um, way in. I love it. I, I I had to write the story and um, it it it's kind of turned out okay. Yeah, um, yeah I, I think so. I, I think you're going to be okay, Chris. I think it's going to work I, out. I mean, I mean, now here I am. I've I've quit my job, so I sure hope so. Yeah. <laughs> well, so what did you do with that story? Um, well, I I uh, I wrote it. You know, did did the things that I thought I was supposed to do, you know, got it edited and uh, shopped it around to agents. And, and I sent it off to about 75 and, and half of them said, no, uh, the other half I'm, I'm still waiting to hear, but after five <laughs> years, I'm guessing it's no. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I, I, I had heard about this whole self publishing thing, but I didn't know anything about it. And um, I, I, you know, Google searched it on the internet and I was like, Oh my God, there's, there's so much info. Um, but I, I'd, I'd been in the military for 20 years and planning was something I could do. So I, I built a plan to figure out what I needed to do and to learn the things I needed. And, uh, I, I put it all together and, you know, got it edited, got a cover, did all the right things. And, and I, I loaded it up and onto Amazon one day when, when the family was all gone, you know, because I, I felt like a complete fraud, um, you know, because I didn't have an English degree and I didn't have friends in the publishing industry. So, you know, everyone was going to say, Oh, what, what makes you think you can write a story? You know, and I, I loaded it up and, and, and then I sat there and the hardest thing I think I'd ever done in my life or, or one of the top three anyway, was to click the, you know, publish button. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and I, I hit the button and, and immediately jumped out of the chair and ran to the other side of the, the, kitchen because if if the lightning bolt struck i didn't want to be there um but it but it didn't and uh i walked back over and and sat there looking at it you know for a couple minutes what have i done what have i done and i i clicked refresh and i'd already sold a already sold a book and i was like oh my god i'm a professional <laughs> author you know and it was it was just uh it was it was kind of surreal but that uh that feeling of of hovering your mouse over the publish button button waiting to click it is is probably what it feels like to stand buck naked in Times Square. I would imagine. Just <sighs> oh full, my gosh, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's 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 a lot like that. It's it, it well, it's it's getting ready to stand buck naked in Times Square. It's you've right. got the trench coat on and you've got hold of the lapel <laughs> and you're about to throw it off. Um, you know, that's, that's what it is. Cause you're about to bear everything to the world. Oh, that's um, amazing. That's yeah. amazing. So what was that first story? Red Tide, uh, okay. the Chinese invasion of Seattle. Okay. All right. So, uh, so you, you get the idea for the story, you write it. How, how long did it take you to write it? Oh, it didn't take me long at all. Um, it, it really just flowed and flowed and flowed. Um, I, I think it took about, about a month, um, okay. which, you know, is, is pretty good considering I had a day job and, you know, I had, I had three kids and, and a wife and, you know, a lot of, a lot of things going on, but, uh, just, just really wanted to, to keep going with it. It just kept flowing. Wow. So you had, you mentioned that you didn't have an English degree. You didn't know anyone in publishing you, um, and, 
on uh, on one hand, you know, you could look at that as as a, uh, a hindrance. You know, I, I don't have any ends to the industry. Um, but on the other hand, you don't know what you don't know yet. And, and that's a, <laughs> it was it was incredibly liberating not to have anybody tell me no. It is. It is. <laughs> and if, if I'd have known people, they'd have looked at it and gone, eh, it's probably not quite ready for prime time. Eh, you really don't know what you're doing. Eh. But I didn't have any of that. I, you know, my wife was like, oh, OK, whatever. Um, if you think so, sure, go ahead. Well, you know, that uh, uh, that anonymity of, of book one is is a rare gift because you never get that back again. You never get the ability to just work on something with no expectations, no one waiting for it. Um, you know, are, are people that like the first one, are they going to like this one? You don't have any of that. And, right. uh, and that's, that's a rare gift, but, uh, but alas, it doesn't last long. Uh, <laughs> The more you know, the more strict restrictions you have on. Oh you. yeah, oh yeah, and it, there becomes the pressure of uh, of being an author. Then, so so, how did you follow up that first book? Um, well, I wrote I wrote the second one. Um, you know, because it was a it was a duology, um, and and you know the first one took off and really started selling, and I was like, oh my god, I need to do this again. This is cool. Um, people are going to pay me for stories. This is awesome. You know, and the, the reviews were pretty good. And, you know, so I, I thought that I was, I was doing great. Um, so I got, wrote the second one and, and that went out and, um, there was, there was pretty good read through from the first to the second. I'm like, wow, this is really cool. But I really, the, the first two were military fiction. Um, and, and I really wanted to write sci-fi. So I, in the third book, I took the characters to space and, and I was really, really worried, you know, okay, I'm, I'm changing genres kind of, um, you know, are people going to follow? Um, and, and, it, it wasn't, you know, that they all followed. It was like I found an incredibly huge new audience and, and it dwarfed the sales of the first two. You know, it, it really went crazy um, to the point where uh, the, my son had his first um, first year in college right then. And, and I paid the tuition and my wife's like, you know, where, where did the money come from? And I said, oh, well, that's from, you know, the, the book. Uh, the books that I'd sold. And, and she's like, what are you doing? And I said, what do you mean? She said, you should be writing right now. <laughs> um, you know, I, and, yeah, I have that same wife, I think. Yeah. But, but she, you know, she's great. Um, she's been my, my biggest supporter, the, the whole journey um, could not do it without her, you know, even though, even though she, she was unsure what this whole writing thing was or would be. Um, she's the one that convinced me to, to quit uh, my day job and, and take it on full time. So, you know, she's, she's really been the, the person that, that has urged me on for all of this. So, um, wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to do it without her. That's fantastic. Even though I, even though I give her a hard time about some of the <laughs> early stories, um, I, I certainly wouldn't have done it without her. Of course. Of course. That, uh, that support on the home front is, uh, it, it it's, it's nearly impossible to succeed without it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, you mentioned the third book. You took it to space. Um, you know, there are a lot of fans of military fiction, of uh, military thrillers and, you know, political thrillers. But the science fiction audience is an entirely different animal. Um, the sci fi readers out there are amazing folks and will will chew up everything you throw at them. Um, what were what were some of the things that surprised you? about writing science fiction and publishing science fiction? Um, well, I'd, I'd been a reader of sci-fi all my life. I mean, um, growing up, I think I, I read all of the, uh, all of the science fiction that our, my hometown library had. Anytime they'd get a new book, they'd just call my mom and go, Hey, we've got, we've got some new books. <laughs> and, and, and it sounds like I'm kidding, but I'm not. They really did call the house. I believe you. Um, that's, that's how much I read. Um, so I, 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 it's, I, I think the thing that's been the most interesting is, is meeting the, uh, the authors that I loved. Cause I never, you know, growing up reading, I, I never figured I'd, I'd meet an author, you know, I, I never wanted to be an author. Um, and now all of a sudden here I am, you know, not only meeting, but, um, you know, having a beer with some of my favorite authors and, and that's, you know, just, 
Um, <laughs> I hate to reuse the word surreal, but <laughs> that's exactly what it was. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the internet has been, uh, it, it's a home to a lot of trolls and a lot of negative stuff, but, uh, all that stuff aside, um, it, it has really been the great equalizer in, uh, allowing people like you and me to have a voice, uh, and to, to publish in ways that has never been possible before, but to connect with others as well. And the, the author community, the indie author community, especially, uh, it's, it's a really, really special thing. Oh, absolutely. And, and, I would say that that's probably been the thing that I've enjoyed the most um, about this whole author thing is is getting to to meet um, the readers, um, you know, to go to cons and interact with them online. Um, you know, that's that's probably the the best part of my day. Right. Uh, aside from the trolls, and I just didn't. <laughs> yeah, you just you know, there, there yeah, comes yeah, a point yeah. where you just have to overlook that stuff. Right. Even Stephen King gets one star. So that's whatever. right. That's right. That's right. So um, you you mentioned that your uh, your wife is, is like, you know, what are you doing? You, you should be writing at, at what point did you realize that this is uh, this is more than a hobby? This is something that could actually sustain us. And and uh, and this could be a whole different career. Um, I, I think that I realized that. Um, fairly early on, once I had started going to, to the sci-fi, you know, and, and the, the, the first few books resonated with readers, um, you know, I, I realized, hey, you know, this is something that, um, you know, really I, I could do I could do more of. I could do as much of as I wanted um, after the, you know, the, the second or third year of, of doing it. Um, I was making more writing than I was in my day job and I was spending a lot less time at it. And, and I thought, you know, why am I even here for this day job thing? <laughs> right. Um, and, and I actually went ahead and, and quit. Um, you know, I had, um, had, had some things happen and, and just wasn't satisfied where I was. So I, I said, you know what, I'm making more as a writer. I, I don't need you. I quit. Um, but but then the kids got to college and I'm like, uh, maybe uh, silly thing about colleges. They want to be paid when they want to be paid. They don't they don't want to hear. Yeah. Hey, I just released a book and in two months I'm going to get paid for it. So can you wait two months? Yeah, they're, they're not big on that. So <laughs> it's funny how that works. Yeah, I have yeah. Uh, I have four kids in college at the moment. And oh, uh, you win. I only have three. Yeah, it's uh, they're, they're all one is uh, working on his master's and then down to uh, a couple of freshmen. So when, when I say win, I, I don't really mean win. Um, <laughs> I, I, I picked up on the sarcasm. I got yeah, you. I, I mean, lose spectacularly. Yeah, that's but, that's uh, that's that's dad humor that uh, yeah, that yeah. can only be interpreted okay. by certain people. I got you. I'm, I'm picking yep. up what you're putting down. Awesome. Um. You said that that first book took you about a month to write and, uh, have, uh, d did the second book go that well? Did, um, did you, did you discover some, um, some technique that uh, allows you to, uh, to write so well so quickly? Well, I, I don't know that I wrote so well so quickly. Um, you know, I, at the time I thought that I was writing, you know, great. I, I thought that, wow, you know, this is, I don't see what people are talking about. I'm, I'm great. I'm doing, I'm writing great stuff and this is awesome. Um, you know, but, but one of the things that I did was every morning I spent, uh, you know, I'd get up early and I'd, I'd spend about, uh, 15 or 20 minutes reading, uh, blogs on how to write better or, or how to be a better marketer, you know, how to either run the business side better or, or become better at my craft. Um, and, and, and so I, I did continue to improve. And, and after about a year and a half, I went back and read my first book and I'm like, Oh my God, this is unreadable. How did people like this? Um, you know, just because I, I'd improved so much. That, that I couldn't even read my own stuff anymore. <laughs> but, you know, so I, I went back and, and redid the first couple books just to make them make them readable to me. So it, it was funny how your perception of what is good changes, um, you know, because I, I, I really thought that I was I thought I was great. 
But but then I went back and I went, oh, okay, now I see why the the agents were kind of like, nah, no thanks. Um, <laughs> but you know, yeah, we all um, grow. some people That's- found it and liked it, and that was enough to keep me going. And and you know, I've I've gotten better, and and uh, you know, people people still like it, and actually people like it more and buy it, and that's that's awesome. Yeah. Um, you got in about five, five and a half years ago. There was some, uh, there was a lot of synergy, uh, around self publishing at the time. Uh, Hugh Howie was, was making uh, a lot of news at the time. Um, several other folks, there was just this, this real buzz and energy, uh, around self publishing at the time. And it seems like that if you could get a book out, you could get an audience and there was just, real dynamism uh going on then um how do you feel like uh the uh you know kindle publishing the, the self publishing world has changed in those 5 or 5 and a half years and uh do you think that the maturing of the industry is changing the kind of books that we uh need to put out um well i think the the thing that really has changed is it's gone from self publishing to indie publishing um, and, and what I mean by that is, is self-publishing is basically anybody that wants to jumps in, puts out a book, hooray, I'm, I'm a published author. Um, indie publishing is more of a craft. It, it's traditional publishing without the, the traditional publisher. Um, you're doing everything that a traditional publisher would do, um, you know, from, from the editing, from the proofreading, you know, great covers, you know, it, it's you are putting out a professional product, whereas, you know, in the the uh, the heated times of, of self-publishing, you know, there was a lot of dreck out there. Um, and, and certainly there still is. Uh, don't get me wrong. There's there's a lot of stuff that, you know, just because you can publish doesn't mean you should. Um, but but the, the quality overall has gotten much better, which. Um, you know, certainly has, has made the competition, um, probably harder, even though there's, there's fewer people doing it. The ones that are doing it are, are much better at it. Um, you know, and are, are better at marketing and better at, at doing all of those business side things, um, to, to make, um, make money at it, you know, and, and there are some, lots of people that are, are doing very, very well. Um, because they do it very, very well. So, right. Uh, you've done a number of collaborations. Uh, Mark Wandry, uh, comes to, uh, to mind, uh, James Young, uh, and some others. Uh, what is it about collaborations that you like so much? Um, well, uh, most of the, um, the anthologies that, that we've done, um, have been to try and grow the, the Four Horsemen universe. Um, and that was that was a project, you know, with with Mark and I, um, he approached me with the idea and, and I loved it. And, and we game planned it all and, and and started on it. And we wrote the first four books. Um, but we we wanted to expand the universe a little bit. And, and we were having a great time, but we knew that there were some areas we just wouldn't be able to get to for a while. So I. Um, you know, I, we asked some of our author friends, hey, would you like to write a short story in the universe? Um, and, and as the publisher, I was looking for 14 stories. I ended up with 42 um, because people were reading the, the Four Horsemen universe and they were having such a great time um, that, that everyone wanted to play. Everyone wanted to write a story, um, you know, and, and so we put out three anthologies. Um, we're now up to six. Uh, that was the, the sixth one that came out here last Friday. Uh, hope is not a strategy. Um, and, and it's, it's great fun and people love it. And, and that makes it, um, worth doing. Um, I write with Mark in the universe, um, because we each have, uh, our own characters and, and, uh, the way the timeline is right now, they're interacting together. So, so we're collaborating together. Um, and, and that is, I, I think the the best part about collaborating is, you know, when you get on, um, you know, either Skype or something like it, 
with uh, another author and you're like, okay, well, what if we do this? And, and he says, well, yeah, that'd be great. But then, you know, we need to do this other thing. And you go, oh yeah. And if we do that, then we can do this. And, and you, you know, you really hype yourselves up about, you know, Hey, where can we go with this? And what can we do? And what can we do to make it exciting for the readers? And, you know, man, they'll never see this coming. <laughs> you know, um, and that's, that's the best part of collaborating with somebody is, is really, you know, the, the synergy that, that two or three people can, can get um, that, that makes it a lot of fun and, and um, really gets the juices going. T- tell us about the Four Horsemen. Um, tell, where did that idea come from? And uh, this has been a, a huge thing. Uh, story collections, the, the ongoing novels. Um, this, this has been a pretty big deal for you. Uh, it's been a very big deal. The, um, the next book that comes out on the 22nd, uh, will be the 30th book in the universe. Um, and, and the four horsemen universe is, uh, Mark Wandry's, uh, idea. And he approached me with it and, um, at a, at a convention. And I said, ah, no, I, I, I can't do it. I got this other thing I'm working on, you know, no, sorry. You know, it, I'll, I'll try and clear my schedule and, you know, maybe we can, we can do something. And, he uh, he said, oh, OK, you know, and, and went away, you know, kind of sad. Um, we, we flash forward a year. We're at the same convention. And I said, hey, Mark, remember that thing you approached me with? You know, hey, I'd love to do it. You know, I cleared my schedule. I'm ready to go. And he's like, oh, well, I've already started on the first book. Uh, oh, well, well, tell me about it. And uh, he, he said, well, tell you, I'll, I'll give it to you. I've, I've got about half of it written. And, and he sent it, you know, emailed it to me. And uh, the next morning I said, hey, you know, I, I read what you sent and, and, and you know, I'm sorry. And, and he's like, you're, you're sorry? But, but I said, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to drop what I was doing so that we can do this together because it's awesome. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he didn't see it coming. And, and he was like, what, 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 what? Um, you know, and, and so we went to the bar and we sat there for about three hours, you know, Hey, how's this going to work? What are we going to do? How's this going to work? Uh, who's going to, you know, I'm going to publish it. You know, we're going to do it this way. We're going to do this. Um, we, we talked through, (laughs) talked through the, the first, uh, set of, you know, a good number of books, um, and where we wanted to go and, and, you know, by the, by the time we were done there, um, well, (laughs) basically the, the bar closed down. Um, and, and kicked us out. We, we had it all put together, what we wanted to do and where we wanted to go. Um, you know, flash forward. Actually, the, the first book was published in December of 16. So that's just over two years. And we've got 30 books in the universe. Um, published one every three weeks last year. Um, probably we'll do about the same because uh, we've opened up the, the universe to some other people. Um, we have a, a core group of authors of, uh, of about five, um, with, uh, Mark and myself and Kevin Eikenberry and, uh, Casey Azell and Marisa Wolf. Um, but, but we've had uh, a number of other authors write stories in the universe. Um, s- some of them have been just phenomenal stories too. Um, in addition to, to all of the anthologies and, um, you know, we've, we've crafted them into the storyline in many cases. Um, you know, the anthologies have spawned series. For example, uh, the first anthology came out and, and the readers wanted to know more about this Peacemaker person. Well, the, the Peacemaker series is now three, three books strong. Um, people wanted to know about this race of uh, cat-like assassins, you know, our cat assassins. Um, and, and that's now about to have its second book. So, you know, the, the readers keep saying, hey, we want more of this. Um, so we give it to them, you know. I think I uh, discovered the Four Horsemen universe uh, from uh, probably um, my buddies Josh and Scott from Keystroke Medium were uh, did a story in one of the previous ones, and I know they they have a story and they have stories in the new one as well. Um, but uh, you know that's one of the great things about doing these story collections and bringing in other authors is then um, your uh, your audience broadens almost exponentially because uh, all of the people that these other people know and uh, and it just really opens up. That's uh, when you get people to work together <laughs> like that. It's 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 unreal what you can do. 
Right. And and I'd be lying if I said that, you know, that wasn't a consideration when we did the anthologies. Oh, of you know, course it is. We, we wanted to get it out. But but it's also great for the other authors, too, because that gives them a chance to display, um, you know, their work to, to people that would never have seen it. So it's a, it's a two way street. And um, I think that it's worked really, really well. Um, you know, certainly we've we've had um, people come to uh, the Four Horsemen universe from them, um, people that, you know, never would have taken a look at it before. But since, you know, their their favorite author wrote in it, they they decided to check it out. And, um, you know, we we did a uh, promotion for the first book over last weekend um, and, and gave away 2000 copies of Cartwright's Cavaliers. Um because, you know, people people have heard of it and, you know, they, they wanted to try it out. Um, but but I also know that we've had a lot of our people find new authors uh, to read. You know, the, the people that read the, the Four Horsemen universe, a lot of them read a lot um, and, and consume a book a week, you know, or more. Um, so that's, it's great for the readers to, to find new people. So, um, it's, it's been a, a very successful undertaking to, to do that and, and open up the universe to, um, you know, to, to new authors, which sometimes is a dangerous thing. Um, you know, you, you let people come in, play in your sandbox, you know, are they going to make nice towers and play nicely? Or are they going to, uh, run around and, and use it as a litter box? <laughs> um, you know, so and that's one of the chances you take, right? Um, but you know, I've as as the publisher, I've I've uh, I am the person you know charged with keeping canon pure, um, and and the authors that we've had have all been great. You know, there there's been a couple times where uh, they kind of went out, hey, I'm gonna I'm going to create this giant, you know, whatever, and, and no, no, you can't, um, and and they've been oh, really? No, you can't. Okay. Um, but you know, by and large, you know, 95% of the, the authors have come in and, you know, just, just done wonderful stories off the bat that, that needed very little of anything. So it's been very cool and, and a lot of fun. I've found some new authors for me. I mean, um, the, the hope is not a strategy. I'd, I'd never read any of uh, Jonathan Brazy's stuff. Um, and, and his story was so good. I have that as the lead off story um, in hope. Um, you know, Tim C. Taylor, um, I, I've loved the stories that he's given us, you know, so I want to read more of him. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a good thing. You have a statement on your website I want to ask you about. Uh, on the on the front page, you say, Welcome to Chris Kennedy Publishing. Here you will find the focus is on fun, message-free science fiction and fantasy. Um, what uh, what has happened um, in science fiction that uh, that warrants a, <laughs> a message-free You're trying to say something that's going to get in I trouble, am, aren't you? I am not. I am not. I, I just uh, – I – I, I just want to – what is going on with the current state of science fiction that that makes us have to say we want to bring the fun back to science fiction? Well, I, I will just tell you that back when, when I was a kid, you know, and I was reading, I read for the escapism. Um, you know, I wanted I wanted whatever I read to be fun. I wanted the books to take me places and, and – you know, where I could be a mercenary and drive a a huge mech and uh, kill aliens and get paid. Um, You know, now these days there is, and it's, it's in our society as a whole. It's not just in literature, but there is um, uh, a loud voice that, that wants to tell you uh, what you should do and how you should have fun. And um, you must do this and you must do that. And um, we're, you know, the, the authors I publish and I are, are just not really um, very good at that. We, we want to write stories that people want to read. We want to write stories that, that gives that sense of escapism. Um, you know, I, I don't want to be told I have to have an, an, an X in my story because you have to have an X, um, whatever that X is. You know, I, I want to, if, if my story needs an X, I'll put it in. Uh, if it needs a Y, I'll put a Y in, you know, I, I put things in because they make sense, not because there's some formula I have to follow to, you know, to appease anybody that says that this is the right way that, you know, this is the right way to write a book. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, not, 
Uh, I'm not very good at, at taking that instruction, I guess. Um, you know, I, I, I want to write stories that people want to read. Um, and, and, you know, if you look at the reviews on the books that, that I publish, um, people are enjoying reading them. Um, and, and that truly is the, the, you know, the, the measure of success that I look at. Um, you know, people, people enjoy and, and are having fun. Uh, the, the Facebook group that we have for the Four Horsemen universe is, is growing by leaps and bounds. Um, so much so that they wanted to start a fan club. Um, and, and there will be a, a Four Horsemen fan club starting in, in a couple of weeks. Um, you know, so I, I doubt that people would want to sign up for a fan club for something that sucked. Um, you know, so we, we write books that are fun so that people can have fun. Um, you know, so that they can see themselves piloting a, a nine foot, you know, 2000 pound mech, um, you know, firing a magnetic accelerator cannon and, you know, a laser with a rocket pack on your shoulder, you know, fun stuff, yeah, fun stuff. Well, when, stuff it, up. <laughs> you know. when it doesn't matter what you have to say, if, uh, if you pissed off everybody that would have read your book, um, right. it, it, it doesn't do you any good to have, um, you know, to, to stand by a message that, that then, um, alienates every science fiction reader. Yep. I, I agree a hundred percent. And I, I personally don't, you know, if you look, obviously you've seen the website. I don't know if you've seen my, you know, any of my social media, I, I generally try not to, uh, alienate anybody, but, um, then again, I, I also don't take direction from anybody either. You know, I, 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 I don't want to say, you know, I, I do this, I do that, and, and everybody should do what I do. You know, every I, I'll do me, you do you. Um, let's let's read some stories, make some stories, and have fun, and you know, let's all let's all be happy. There's there's too much there's too much ar- arguing and hate. Let's all oh, be yeah. happy. Let's yeah. let's make good stories and read yeah. good stories. And and stories ought to be the place that that we. Uh, Join up that they ought to be a, a safe place <laughs> to, to use an overused term, uh, right now. It ought to be a place where we can, um, meet up with people that are not like us and enjoy stories together. It, it shouldn't yeah. be a divisive oh, thing. It, it should be a thing that brings us together. Absolutely. And, and that's, you know, one of the things I enjoy about the, the Facebook group for the Four Horsemen universe is, is seeing what people like and in what they want more of. And, and it's, it's really neat. Um, how some themes resonate and, um, and, and then the, the discussion will just go crazy about, oh, yeah, it'd be cool if, and, and yeah, yeah, that's really cool. You know, um, people getting excited. That's, that's exciting. Yeah. Um, you've morphed from not just an author and not just a collaborator to a uh, full, full on publisher uh, and, and taking on other people's work, it looks like. Um, how, how has that come about and, uh, and how is, <laughs> uh, how is being a publisher? Um, being a publisher is uh, has been very good. Um, y- yes, it's a lot like corralling cats some days. Um, you know, I, I am the head cat herder. Um, but, you know, I, I told you, you know, I, I started doing pretty well with some of the sci-fi and a um, couple people said, hey, you know, uh, looks like you're doing pretty well. Um, I've got this story. How, how about you do that for me too? Um, and I, oh, okay. You know, I, I guess I, I didn't know any better. I, I said, sure, I could do that for you. And, and, you know, it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And, um, you know, after the four horsemen universe, you know, picked up, um, I, I started to get a lot of notoriety as, as a, uh, as a publisher and, um, to the point where, you know, I, I had to start actually telling people, no, I, I can't. Um, you know, I published uh, 50 books last year, which was, you know, almost one a week. Um, you know, so it, it just got to be where it was it was almost too much. Um, and that's where my wife made me uh, quit my day job. Um, but I, I like doing it. Um, you know, it's, it's something that uh, I think that I can do pretty well. Um, you know, I've, I've learned an awful lot which, you know, helps other people to concentrate on uh, doing the writing part. Um, you know, if 
a, a lot of people just want to write stories. They don't want to have to do the marketing. They don't want to have to do the editing and the cover design and all the other things that go into putting out a quality book. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I can do all that. Um, and, and, and I write in the morning and, and do the editing and, and other stuff in the afternoon. And, um, you know, getting to write in the morning keeps me energized and juiced and reading good stories in the afternoon helps too. Well, you're putting out some of the most fun stuff in science fiction right now. And, and, and that's what you told us you were going to do. So you're, you're delivering in spades. Um, Chris, I, I love what you're doing. I love the stories that you're telling. Um, if people are just discovering you and, and your work, where can they connect with you? Find out all that you're doing and get plugged into this, uh, this massive thing that you've got going on. Uh, Chris Kennedy publishing dot com um, is the is the website. Um, they can sign up for the the mailing list there. They'll get a free short story for doing so. One of the the origin stories in the Four Horsemen universe. Um, they can take a look at the imprints. Uh, I have five imprints. Uh, they can see all the books that are available. All the authors. Um, there's some darn good stuff there. Um, you know, not just mine, but some of the other ones that I'm putting out. You know, like you said, are a lot of fun. Um, uh, they also can find me, uh, Chris Kennedy publishing dot biz on uh, Facebook, um, and, and follow along, but, you know, join the mailing list, get a free short story and, and, uh, join us on at the four horsemen Facebook group as well. Um, they can just search for H U, uh, the number four H U, um, on Facebook and, and join the group. Sounds good. We're going to send everybody to see you, Chris. Uh, thanks so much for taking time to come on the show. You bet. Hey, thanks for having me. It's been uh, it's been great chatting with you. Thanks for listening to the Author Stories podcast. For more great author interviews like this one, go to hankgarner.com and dig through the archives. There's something there I know you'll love. Now stay tuned for a special audio clip from Richard Gleaves, the Jason Crane series. They made instant coffee and laid blankets over a pile of hay. He helped Kate pull off her boots. She volunteered for first watch, but Jason couldn't sleep. Talk to me, he whispered. Kate sipped her coffee. She sat silhouetted against the soft navy sky. A field of stars hung above her. The constellations peered in through the windows and slats. How about a story? Sure. My mom used to tell this one. It's the legend of the star maidens. He watched her words as she spoke her story illustrated by puffs of vapor that mixed with the steam of her coffee. Long ago, a Mohican brave became lost in this valley. He'd followed a red deer deep into the woods, but the deer had vanished, and as twilight fell, he lost his way. He searched the heavens. He saw a bright star and followed it. It shone upon a clearing in the woods. Spook rock lay at the center, emanating magic and in the starlight, he discovered the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. He discovered a star maiden. She was dancing with her sisters, and all seven were naked. Oh, really? Jason whispered. Seven naked star maidens? Shh. Why do these things never happen to me? The brave decided he must take the star maiden for his wife, so he seized her and threw her over his shoulder, and she loved him for his courage. They married and had a son. Then what? Then it gets sad. The star maiden missed her home. She gazed at the sky every night. She loved her husband and her baby very much. But she missed her sisters, and she especially missed the dancing. So she snuck away one night and returned to the sacred rock. And she begged her sisters, Please appear. Please appear to me for one last dance. They came to her and took her into the sky. Kate's silhouette swayed. One last dance. It was wonderful. And when the dance was finished, they sent her back to Earth. She thought that she'd been away for only a little while. But that one dance had taken many, many years. She ran back to her husband, back to her baby. But they were gone. Her home was empty. The hunter had stopped waiting for her. He'd given up hope that she would return. He'd taken their child and had left with his tribe. 
One last dance had cost her everything, and she had no home at all. Jason could sense something roiling inside Kate, some brew of feelings that the story had stirred. He wanted to leap up, to grab her and carry her off, his star maiden, and wife. She climbed up to Spook Rock. She heard no music, only wind. She died there of her grief. She dwindled and lost her star form. She became a will-o'-the-wisp, fluttering between the trees. And see that constellation? The Pleiades. Those are her seven sisters, watching down from heaven. And, to this day, if a girl has lost her true love, she can go to Spook Rock and dance, and the star maidens will bless her. They'll grant her one wish, any wish at all, except one. They can't make her true love return. <laughs>